Okay, in this video, I'm going to give a uh, demonstration of uh, multi-group path analysis using the Amos program. And um, this uh, is the basic model that we're going to be testing. Um, uh, the basic idea behind multi-group uh, path analysis um, or any multi-group analysis is uh, to test whether uh, there are significant differences between groups in terms of the parameters that are being estimated. Uh, oftentimes it's the case that um, um, the parameters that are estimated within uh, one group may not uh, generalize um, across groups. Uh, and so that's essentially what we're testing. We're testing whether the uh, parameters um, uh, within your basic model, do they, you know, whether they vary between groups. So that's essentially the, the idea. So um, within this uh, model right here, this model is actually derived from a study that was uh, carried out back in, uh, or published back in 2001. Uh, with this study is by Kornblum and Stefan, uh, 2001. And basically what they were doing was looking at uh, various intergroup attitudes uh, for white and native Canadians and um, you know, determining whether uh, there were differences in terms of the um, relationships uh, among the variables within those groups. Um, and are across the groups. Um, so this seemed to be somewhat of an exploratory study um, where they tested out sort of the configuration of relationships uh, in each group. This is uh, the model that they uh, ended up with for the uh, white participants. Um, and then this is the model that they ended up with for the native uh, participants. So what we're going to do is actually uh, just kind of test this basic model out and see if the parameters um, um, are, um, you know, do they differ between the two groups. Um, so really quickly, you know, kind of looking at our basic model right here, this is derived um, with some modification from this model right here. Uh, and um, just as, a, as an overview of the variables, we have uh, essentially uh, measures of uh, contact, uh, perceived negative contact and intergroup conflict uh, with the other groups. So basically they, uh, they asked uh, Native Canadians and white Canadians uh, about their perceptions of the other group. And then um, so um, they essentially have you know, the same measures for both groups. So um, we have negative contact, uh, perceived conflict, um, the perception of the other group as um, being uh, a realistic threat, a symbolic threat. Um, are, you know, do you hold uh, negative stereotypes for the other group? Do you experience intergroup anxiety related to the other group? And then also, do you have uh, sort of negative evaluative um, uh, feelings uh, towards the other group? So that's the basic uh, model that we have right here. So uh, what I have is um, the data is in two SPSS files. Uh, one is uh, under um, for the uh, white Canadian group, and then one is for uh, the uh, native Canadian group. So this is a native Canadian group and white Canadian group. And so this is a uh, summary matrix data. This was actually taken from the article uh, from uh, tables uh, one, where you have the means and standard deviations for all of your variables for the two groups. And then you also have uh, correlation matrix uh, for the two groups as well. So below the principal diagonal are, uh, are correlations for the white Canadian group. Among the principal diagonal are the correlations for the native Canadian group. And um, so essentially, um, like I said, I've already drawn out this model. I'll just kind of briefly show you how I set up uh, the model and then we'll come back and run uh, our analysis from this model. So I'm just going to click on new and just kind of show you how this was drawn um, or uh, elements of it were drawn. So I'm going to go to view interface properties. Most of the time when I'm drawing out, I like to have a, a wide uh, white space right here. And so you can see it's kind of narrow. So I'm going to click on paper size, landscape legal and apply just so I can have a lot more drawing room. So um, first step um, that I'm going to take is I need to actually um, have uh, be able to import data for both groups. So I'm going to go to uh, manage groups and you'll notice that the first one is group number one and I can give this a name if I want to. I'm going to call this white Canadians 
and then I'll click on new and you'll see a new box opens up and I'll just call this native Canadians. Okay, then click on close and so now I can import the data for both groups. Um, so I'll go over to select data files and click on file name or actually uh, click on one of the groups, uh, the white Canadian group and then click on file name and I'm going to import that data for the white Canadians right here. Then I'll do the same for the native Canadians. Now I want to uh, be really clear on this uh, that that these data sets, the summary data, is not required um, when carrying out multi-group analysis. You can actually, you know, it's very, you can pretty much rely on raw data um, that you have uh, on, for both groups. So uh, this was just uh, taking, uh, again, the summary data from the article because I didn't have the raw data to begin with. So that's, that's all that's taking place. So now uh, you'll see I have 110 white Canadians, 127 native Canadians, and I'm going to click on OK. And so now uh, you can see that in terms of the variables, we have all our variables in the data set and um, we're ready to go. So in terms of uh, drawing out uh, the basic model, we just use the same drawing procedures that we've uh, utilized um, when we're using Amos and our any SEM. Um, so these would be our my two exogenous variables. I have four mediating variables right here, and then I have um, one um, outcome variable downstream. Uh, you have to have um, disturbance terms for each of these, um, for all endogenous variables within the model. And an endogenous variable is just a variable that is being predicted by another variable within the model. So. Um, so I'll, you know, I can just now click on this button right here and then drag uh, my uh, variables over into the, their respective boxes. So there's realistic, symbolic, um, you know, anxiety, you know, stereotyping. And then, you know, um, then we have the negative attitudes right here. And then I'll have the, you know, right click and object properties. You have to name all the disturbance terms. So I'll just call this D1 you know, D2 and so forth uh, like that. Uh, and then we can, you know, draw out our, our um, you know, there's our correlation be our, between our two um, contact and conflict variables and you can draw in your paths and so forth. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time ta drawing this out. I just wanna show you how that, that the, the previous uh, model was drawn. So I'm gonna go back to um, uh, the basic model. And I'm not going to save my work on this, but this is the basic model that we have. And um, and we're going to carry out our analysis. Um, you'll notice that it's not actually set up right now for a multi-group analysis. So I'm going to go back and just go back to manage groups and uh, type in white Canadians and um, native Canadians right here. So there you go and we'll just go ahead and re-import the data um, into uh, the program so there's the white Canadian group and the native Canadian group right here okay so we're basically ready to carry out our analysis uh, under analysis properties uh, under output I've got the standardized estimate squared multiple correlations there are other things I could ask for if I had missing data I would certainly want to make sure to include estimate means and intercepts um, but I, I'm not going to do that uh, right here so uh, at this point we're ready to go so I'm going to click on calculate estimates and so the first thing to, to note is um, with this analysis um, you know, you have to think about multi-group analysis as involving, uh, you know, comparisons of, of various nested models. So uh, this model that I've just run right here, this is what is called an unconstrained model. And what that means is that the, the parameters um, uh, associated with the, with the uh, two groups, they are uniquely estimated. Uh, so what that, so in other words, there are no constraints in terms of, uh, or no equality constraints that are placed on any of the parameters. And so the unconstrained model typically is the baseline model that we compare uh, other models against. And, and the idea is, is that uh, it is the most uh, general model. And typically when we're carrying out um, multi-group analysis and testing to determine if individual paths or individual parameters 
um, are different between groups, we go through a process of constraining the individual parameters and determining if there's a significant decrease in fit um, of a given model relative to the unconstrained model. So what I've essentially done right now is just uh, run an unconstrained model. And so let's just take a look at it. If we click on this little button right here, you'll notice that if I over here we've got, uh, first of all, we've got the two groups. And so you can see that between the two groups, um, you can see all of the parameters are changing when I click on the individual group. And that's because uh, there are no equality constraints that are placed on any of the parameters within the model. Note too that right now we are under unstandardized estimates. If I click on standardized estimates and then go back and forth, these are the standardized coefficients for the two groups. So um, that's just kind of an FYI. So let's take a, a little deeper look. So if we go under um, you know output, so I just clicked on this little button right here for view text and I get this output. Under model fit, you'll see that we get, um, we have um, our model. This is the chi-square for our model, the degrees of freedom for the model. There's our test, uh, our p-value. Um, we've got the CFI, TLI, and so forth. Uh, you can see that the CFI is pretty good. TLI, not so good, or RFI is not very good. But, um, you know, these indices are, are kind of indicating um, acceptable fit. But um, I'm not terribly thrilled with uh, the model. Um, also down here, you can see the RMSCA, it's 0 0.131, so that's not telling, that's telling us that there's, uh, that's not a particularly good fit um, either. Um, so the unconstrained model is actually not fitting um, all that great, uh, but we're going to still use that as our baseline, and I'm just mainly interested in walking you through the process. Uh, that's probably the re one of the reasons why uh, the, the authors in the study ended up kind of, uh, you know, with two separate models is that uh, they're basically kind of suggesting that the configuration of relationships uh, maybe differs between the two groups. Uh, but again, we're, we're right now, I'm just testing one configuration across the two groups. So um, at this point, uh, oh yeah, so let's go back and um, yeah, so that's, that's the basic unconstrained model. If we go to estimates, you can see uh, when I highlight this and go down here, you, you'll see I've got um, regression weights for the model, uh, white Canadians, and then uh, native Canadians. And so you can see when I click between these two, all the parameter estimates, uh, you, know, uh, ver you know, change, the values change between the groups. There's our p-values look uh, to be different. looks like in the native group, you know, we ha actually have a couple of, you know, several paths that are non-significant, whereas in the white Canadian group, um, you know, really all of our paths are significant. So there are some differences there. And um, so that's just kind of a, a quick demonstration of the basic unconstrained model. And we're going to see that model appear again in just a second. So at this point, I want to do some testing um, in uh, testing um, the um, uh, uh, invariance of the parameters between the groups. So what to do this, what I need to do is go to analyze, uh, and now I'll go to multiple group analysis. And the deal is that, and it sort of clears everything off right here. Now the deal is, is that typically with um, invariance testing, what that involves is, uh, again, it's testing um, a set of uh, various constrained models uh, in relation to an unconstrained model. And so the I, and, and so one way to do this uh, is just to simply go through parameter by parameter, um, constraining, you know, constraining an individual parameter and then or excuse, yeah, constraining an individual parameter and leaving the other parameters uh, free and then determining uh, if the fit between uh, what your constrained model decre decreases, significantly in relation to the unconstrained model. Um, and so you can do this. Uh, basically, if we, if we went with this approach uh, right here, what that would entail is, you know, that would kind of force me to have to go into the program and, you know, get the chi-square for each uh, model uh, that is constrained and then compute a difference uh, test. Uh, in relation to the unconstrained model, and that's kind of a pain in the neck. So there's a little bit more efficient way of doing that um, in Amos. And so, you know, like I said, if I go to analyze multi-group analysis um, and then click on OK right here, you'll notice that the program 
gives me several, you know, several models. So the first model has structural weights all constrained to equality. And so what that means is that all the paths within my model will be uh, constrained between the two groups. So that means that, you know, all the other parameters in the model uh, will be uh, freely estimated um, um, within the groups, but uh, the path coefficients will, uh, will be uh, constrained to equality. The second model incorporates the structural weights, the constraints on the construct structural weights, as well as uh, a constraint on the structural covariance, like right here between negative contact and conflict. And then the structural residuals model basically is going to constrain the variances and covariances with respect to the, um, the uh, disturbance terms. So um, I'm mainly going to be focusing in on this presentation on the issue of, of, um, of um, non-invariance um, with respect to the structural weight. So we're going to mainly focus in on that. So at this point, uh, which I didn't, I didn't follow through, and so the program lost what I asked for. So now when this happens, I'm going to click on OK. And so now you get um, the model with all of the parameters in it. You'll notice that uh, you know when I click back and forth, the, the first part of each parameter is, is the same in terms of its name across the two groups. But the second part, like one right here, will ch change to two right here. That's essentially for group one and group two. Um, so you can see that um, we have uh, 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 separate names for each parameter between groups, but part of the name is, uh, is the same between the two groups. So it's really just the second part uh, associated with the naming that is different between the two groups. You'll notice that over here we have, um, you know, different models that are laid out. And so, you know, I can kind of look at, um, let, if I uh, click on Calculate Estimates, now what's going to happen is, is that I get, um, and then click on this button right here, I get the parameters for, um, for the two models. And so right now, if I put it under unconstrained and go back and forth between uh, the, t the two groups, you can see all of the parameters are freely estimated. When I click on structural weights and go back and forth between, you can see that all the parameters except for um, the path coefficients, um, they are allowed to vary. So. Uh, it, the path coefficients have been constrained to equality between the two groups. When I click on structural covariances and go back and forth between um, the two groups, you can see that now this covariance between these two variables is uh, constrained as well as the path coefficients and so forth. So um, let's go under view text and model fit. So now you can see we get um, our fit statistics, basically our chi-square values for um, for our unconstrained model, our structural weights being constrained, structural covariance is constrained, and structural residuals. You'll see the degrees of freedom are changing as well um, between the models. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, essentially as we are constraining more of our uh, uh, parameters to equality, we are, uh, you know, we're essentially estimating fewer parameters. And so the degrees of freedom are getting larger uh, as well. So you can see uh, that in general, just descriptively, it looks like that the model fit is decreasing as we move from the more general unconstrained model to more uh, to uh, with increasing levels of constraints um, across models. Um, the CFI, you can see this, uh, the same general pattern right here, and then the RMSCA, um, you know, kind of. Um, um, is, is somewhat similar, but you know you can see that uh, actually the RMSAA gets a little bit better right here, uh, kind of goes up here, and then uh, really uh, gets higher with the structural residuals model. Um, if I click under estimates, now you'll notice that uh, so we can go back and forth. We have the unconstrained model, uh, the um, structural weights, constraints, structural covariances, and so forth. And we can look at the individual parameters between uh, our, our two groups. So you can see right here for the unconstrained model, these are the parameter estimates for the white Canadians and native Canadians. You can see those changing, uh, which is the same as what we had done earlier. When we look at the structural weights model, uh, you can see that now when I go back and forth between the two groups that the estimates and, and, and so forth are the same, but you can see when it comes to the other parameter estimates, they're all, you know, 
changing, and that's because these um, estimates have not been constrained to equality. So that's how to look at it. Now, if we go to model comparison, uh, this is where um, this is this is extremely handy because we can compare these different models uh, to um, uh, an unconstrained model. So you can see it says nested model comparison. So it, basically, the structural weights model is nested under the unconstrained model. Um, the structural covariances model is nested under the structural weights model and, and by, by virtue of that also nested within the unconstrained model. Structural residuals is nested under the structural covariances model which is nested under structural weights which in turn is nested under the unconstrained model. So you can see that you've got these models that are being compared against the unconstrained uh, model right here. So these are chi-square difference tests and so this is these are uh, basically, in large part, uh, because uh, adding in equality constraints decreases fit. In large part, we're going to be looking at whether there's a significant decrease in fit by adding in equal, um, equality constraints. So you can see that um, you know, this is a chi-square difference test for the structural weights model. You can see there's a significant decrease in fit. That's the p-value uh, for the uh, chi-square difference test. If we um, add in the structural covariance, uh, there's also a significant decrease in fit, but we don't really know based on this whether there's a significant decrease in fit by adding in the parameter relative to the structural weights model. If we want to look at that, then we can go down here to where it says structural weights model, and you can see that um, so uh, this is a degrees of free uh, a chi square difference test in relation to the. Um, structural uh, weights model, and you can see that adding in that structural covariance decreased um, uh, the fit of this model relative to that one. Um, and then if we wanted to see if there's a significant uh, decrease in fit by adding in the uh, structured structural residuals, we can go to this model right here, there's the difference test and then the significance value. So it looks like that really at each step there was a significant decrease in fit by adding in additional uh, constraints. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to mainly key in on just the the question of um, uh, of you know whether. Usually defined as indicating removal, absence, or separation from. Okay, uh, really quickly, pardon that. That was Alexa, uh, evidently deciding to uh, start talking to me in the middle of my conversation. So, um, at any rate, uh, kind of getting back to what I was saying, we have you know at this point we want to test whether. Um, the structural weights model, you know, given that we see that there is a significant decrease in fit when we constrain all of our uh, path coefficients to equality, we then want to determine if there, which um, paths should be uh, treated as uh, non-invariant between groups. In other words, which paths should we uh, uh, treat as um, different between the two groups? So that's the, the, what we're doing now. So we're going to go and uh, I'm just going to uh, click this off. And so I'm now what I can do is I can go through each individual path because we now know that in general the, there's a significant decrease in fit uh, between the structural weights model and the constrained model. And so now uh, what I'll do is I will go through a process of constraining each individual path uh, to equality and then seeing if there's a significant decrease in fit from uh, the constra a, a given constrained model and the unconstrained model. So to do this, we're going to go to Analyze, go to uh, Manage Models. And so you'll notice right here we've got model name, it says unconstrained. We've got all of our variable names. You can see, uh, and I'll kind of scroll down, you can see we've got our weights right here. These are the regression weights. The B11 and B12, that's the regression weight for path one. Um, in group one, B12 is the, the regression weight for uh, the second group. So, you know, essentially, you know, as we're looking at this, the B11, this is it right here. That's for the white Canadian group. The B12 is for the native Canadian group. So, uh, you know, basically what I'll do is, um, let me go back here again. I'm going to now click on new. And you'll see that it says model name. And it starts with model five because we already have these models specified. Um, if I wanted to delete the other ones, I could, but I'm just going to leave those alone. And at this point, I'm just going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this B1 constrained uh, for lack of a better, uh, more imaginative name. So 
now what I'll do is I'll I'll click on B11 right here and then equals and then B11 or B12 uh, and so we're gonna for this model we're gonna constrain only uh, this path coefficient. So we're only going to constrain this path right here to equality and allow all of the other parameters in the model to be freely estimated. Uh, then if I want to do another one, I can say, I can click on new and I'll just call this B2 constrained. And, um, and so now I'll find the B21 and uh, B22 right here and so forth. Now let's say, uh, that I wanted to constrain uh, this correlation to equality. Well, that that's pretty easy as well. I can just kind of scroll up here, and you can see the covariances. And this the name of this is CCC11 for uh, the white Canadian group, and CCC12 for the native Canadian group. So here it is for um, for uh, the uh, um, the white Canadian and native Canadian groups. So I'm just going to call this uh, covariance equality, just for lack of a better name for it. And then I'll just type on, I'll just double click here and equals and then double click here. And then, um, so I'm not going to go through every one of these because you can see it, it can take uh, quite a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this out. And so now you can see that all the three models that I've asked for uh, in terms of placing equality constraints, they've all been uh, incorporated. So now I'm just going to run it, calculate estimates. And so now you can see I've got each individual model. If I want to you know, see the parameters for those models, uh, the equality, the B1 constraint right here, this model, you can see that uh, if I go back and forth between white and native Canadians, you can see all the other estimates are are changing um, um, values except for this path right here from conflict to symbolic um, and, and so forth. Then for this model right here, you can see that if I go back and forth, all the uh, estimates are, the values for those estimates are, are, are changing um, at least somewhat, uh, whereas this covariance right here between these two variables is, uh, is uh, the same. So if I click on view text, uh, model fit. So now we've got our various models. You can see, uh, you know, how well, how, how well each of the individual models are fitting. You can see there's the B1 constraint, B2 constraint, covariance equality. By the way, these are just, you know, like I said, these are arbitrary naming. So you don't have to, you know, stick with what I'm using. Um, you can see the CFIs for all of the different types of models and RMSEA for each of the models as well. Uh, under model comparison, you now have um, the nested comparisons. And so in this case, you know, really what, uh, what we're doing is we're comparing each of these models relative to the unconstrained model. So you can see right here, the B1 constrained, uh, there is, um, you know, this is a chi-square, the chi-square difference test, comparing uh, the chi-square of the con this constrained model with the B1 constrained against the unconstrained model. And you can see that uh, the p-value is 0.533. So that's telling me then there's no significant difference um, in fit between uh, the unconstrained model and the constrained model. And so what that tells me is that we have um, essentially um, uh, the parameters should be treated as equal between the two groups because when I constrain the parameter uh, between the two groups, we did not have a, uh, we did not have a significant decrease in fit. So we have essentially equality of the B1 parameter uh, between the two groups. The B2 constraint, you can see that this, now we have a p-value that is 0 0.028. And so what that's telling me then is that we have a lack of equality um, uh, between uh, the, the, uh, the constrained model and the unconstrained model. So, um, um, Essentially, then uh, we have some evidence that at least this parameter right here should be should be uh, freely estimated between the two groups. Uh, the covariance equality, you can see that there's no significant uh, decrease in fit when we uh, constrained um, the uh, covariance between uh, the conflict uh, variable and the contact variable uh, between groups. And so. Um, in this case, that's telling us that there's uh, equality of the covariances uh, for, uh, between the two groups. So 
that's essentially the process uh, um, in a nutshell. Uh, you'll notice if we go under uh, estimates, you can see again that down here we've got you know these different models that are uh, available to you. There's the B1 constrained model. Uh, there's this is for the um, you know white Canadian group and native Canadian group. So the B1 estimate right here, conflict is symbolic, you know, is not changing between the two groups. B2 con constrained. When we look at uh, this right here, we see this path. Um, there's our label B2. Um, you know, this path this path coefficient is constrained to equality, whereas all the other parameters are freely estimated. So. Um, that's, you know, that's essentially the process in a nutshell. We could spend a lot more time on uh, the ins and outs of um, multi-group analysis. But basically, that's the, the idea, is that we're essentially testing the parameters within our model to determine uh, which ones um, um, should be treated as equal uh, uh, between groups and which ones should be uh, treated as 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 um, not being equal or uh, lacking equality. Um, so that is uh, the conclusion of this um, video.